Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about my 10 favorite books of 2021. So yes, I was able to narrow it down to 10. It was a very difficult process. I read a total of 72 books last year and to be honest, most of those were great reads. I think that the 50 to 60 books that I've read, the 60 best books, were actually books that I would recommend. There were only a couple, maybe a handful, maybe 10, that I just didn't like, that were disappointing reads and I am going to have a video of those books as well together with my DNS because I don't want to spend too much time on those books so I will you know mesh them together in one video but the majority of the books that I picked up are great I'm not the type of person that's going to pick up books that I think I won't like all of the books that I picked up are generally books that I thought were going to be four to five star reads so yes I do think that it pays off to not want to hate read and to just only pick up books that you think are going to be solid books now, for this list, I have decided to only put one book per author on the list. Otherwise, a couple of the Realm of the Elderlings books, for instance, would have made the list. But I don't think that that's fair. And to just have a little bit of variety, I have one book per author. So without further ado, let's get into the list. And the first book that I have on the list is The Last Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. So this is the last book in the First Law trilogy. And to be honest, I don't even know if I like the first, the second or the third one most of all. It's all meshed together in my brain, but I really enjoyed this trilogy in general. And I don't know if that's the trilogy's work or the narrator, because I did listen to the audiobooks and I did some immersive reading here. But all in all, I really enjoyed it. It's only number 10, because even though I liked the humor, I laughed multiple times out loud, which is very unusual for a grim dark trilogy, I suppose. I liked the writing style, I liked the characters, all of that. There were some things that I didn't really like for the conclusion that lowered the trilogy, but still. It's on my top 10, so it's an amazing read. And if you want to know more, I do have a non-spoiler review for the entire trilogy on my channel that I will link in the cards up above. Then my number nine. This was a very big surprise, and that is The Kings of Ash by Richard Nell. So this is the second book in the Ash and Sand trilogy. My friend Steve absolutely loved this trilogy. It's his favorite trilogy of all time, and I really enjoyed it. Obviously, it's my number nine. Kings of Ash was definitely the best book of the trilogy and it's just an amazing read. I again have a non-spoiler review for this trilogy. If you like Grimdark, if you like character-driven books but also with a lot of world building and just a very interesting plot, I do recommend to pick up this trilogy. And even if you might not be all in after the first book, this second book will definitely change your mind. Then my number eight is a book that I actually talked about quite a number of times quite recently because this is a recent read. And that is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This is the first book in the Magic of the Lost series, only the first book is out currently. And this is a colonial fantasy. But if you're a character-driven reader, I think this is what's going to draw you in most of all. The political intrigue is quite good. The colonial aspect is something that's quite refreshing in my opinion. But the characters, the characters you either love or hate. I was on the love side, of course, and that is why it's my number eight. You follow a grown-up child soldier who is very confused, you could say. She has been indoctrinated her whole life. Now she goes back to the colony where she was originally from, but now as a soldier of the empire. And following her internal struggle was something that I liked most of all. But on the other hand, we follow Luca, who is the crown princess and who needs to butt down the rebellion in that colony and who also has quite a bit of an internal struggle. I really enjoyed this. I do think that some of the criticisms that I see of the characters not really acting the smartest Yes, it's true, but I also think that it's realistic. So I enjoyed it. It's definitely a slower read. I think that a lot of the political intrigues and what's happening in the plot is actually not that much, but the characters. The characters are what, you know, absolutely drew me in and that make me very interested in the next book in the trilogy or in the series. I actually don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or longer, but I do hope that she ramps up a little bit more the plot because you cannot only be invested in the character for a longer series. So I am quite interested to see what she's going to do with the rest of the series. And then another recent read, and that is The Grace of Kings by Ken Lu. So this one is big. It's definitely different than what I normally read. You have multiple POVs. I usually don't like that if you have a very big cast of characters. You have a lot of political intrigue. This is actually based on Chinese history, actual wars that happened in Chinese history. So I would definitely recommend not looking that up because you would be spoiled for the entire series probably but somehow it was so well written and the characters were so interesting to follow that 
I didn't really mind going out of my comfort zone. I have heard that this first book is actually the weakest one of the three books I think that are currently out. The fourth book is going to be released in 2022 and this will be the final book in this series. So if this is the weakest one, I cannot wait to see what happens next. I just really enjoyed following these characters. And what I thought was quite refreshing is that this story is almost being told as some kind of documentary. So you are being told this history and what happened here. And that does mean that you're a little bit more detached from the characters than what I normally like. But I just really liked the narrative voice here and how this story was told. So that's why it's quite high on my you know list of 2021. I think that's 10, 9, 8, it's number 7. So I cannot wait to see what the rest of the series holds and I am going to read it in 2022. So maybe those will be on my top 10 of 2022. Fingers crossed. And then my number 6. This is a very small book. It's actually the absolute opposite from the last one because this is Piranesi. A big cast of characters? No, we only have two and we follow the main character, Piranesi. I don't really know if I have a review for this, but I do think that I have a vlog where I vlog my experience while reading this. I loved the writing style. I loved how this was told, again, an unconventional way of telling a story because we are reading the journal entries of Perinesi, who lives in this big, almost unending building that has very big rooms and they are filled with pillars and filled with different pieces of art. I loved this. I loved the naivety of Perinesi, but I also loved the mystery and not knowing why he is here and why there is only one other person here that Perinesi calls the other. I don't know if I love the reveal, as much. I think that this would be even higher on the list if I liked the reveal of the mystery more. But all in all, this was an amazing read and for such a short book to still be in my mind to this day, it definitely means something. So now Susanna Clark is somebody that I want to read more of, even though I have heard that Piranesi is very different from her other book, which is Mr. Strange and Dr. Norell, something like that, which is, you know, almost a thousand pages, I think. So definitely two opposites here, but I do want to read more of this author. We're already halfway through the list and the next one is my number five and that is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek. This is Norse myth retelling. I don't think that anybody is surprised that this one made it to the list because I have been talking about this book the entirety of this year. I read it in the beginning of the year, January, February, and I couldn't stop thinking about it to this day. So that definitely means something. In this one we follow Eivboda. Eivboda is a witch and her story begins when she flees from Odin because she refuses to share her magic with him. So she goes to a very remote forest and there she finds a cave where she lives in. She eventually becomes one of the wives of Loki and this is her tale. I love this. I have never heard of Angerboda, but from what I've heard after reading this book, it's that you don't really learn a lot of her while reading the original Norse myths. And she seems like a very harsh character in those myths. While here she is completely fleshed out and I absolutely loved her. She is also a mother character and I really liked how she viewed her children as well. So yeah, definitely a hard hitting story as well. A more harsh story, which is very reminiscent of Norse mythology in general, but I absolutely adored it. Then for my number four of 2021, and that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kwan. Now, I can definitely notice and acknowledge that this book has some issues. The writing style is not the strongest, especially the dialogues do need some work in my opinion, but I just loved the story here and I loved our main character. I do think that the second and the third book in this series are not as good. They're still fine and I still enjoyed reading them, but I do think that there were more issues there, especially in the plot, that weren't here. I absolutely loved this first book. I was so hopeful and while I was reading it, I think that I was just enjoying my entire ride. This is a coming of age story almost. It's a grim dark story. And in this one we follow Rin while she goes to a school where she has a very hard time fitting in and just trying to survive almost before she gets taken to war. Now, if you know me, you know that I love this. I love coming of age stories where our main character just has a very hard time fitting in. We have that with Valen and Bloodsong, where you also have a school setting and you also have very harsh conditions. That's something that I quite enjoyed. So for me, actually, the first half of this book was my favorite. And then in the second half, where they actually go to war, you have some very dark passages that I quite enjoyed and that made me hopeful for the second and the third book. But that first half was actually what I liked most of all. So because of that, even though I didn't like the trilogy as a whole as much as some of these other series that I have on the list, that first book was so good that it just deserved to be here. And now we're finally at my top three. So the third book on the list 
Even though it's not adult fantasy, it just deserved to be here because of how much I enjoyed it while reading. And that is Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. This is a sci-fi, it's the second book in the Red Rising series. And if you have seen my vlog for Red Rising, I actually didn't like that first book. I thought the writing style was not that good, I didn't like the main character Darrow, and especially how he was written by the author. I think that he wasn't really a very enjoyable, but also not a very realistic character, especially in the beginning. That second half I thought was better, but it was very reminiscent of Hunger Games, so not that original. But then this book. I was actually contemplating to DNF the series. I didn't. I picked up this one and I was so happy. Everything that I didn't like from the first book was improved upon in this one. It had twist after twist after twist. It was so fast-paced. I almost couldn't follow what was happening because it was so fast-paced. And normally that's something that I don't like. But somehow it fits in this book. And it's my favorite sci-fi to date. I think that the third one was very good as well, but had some issues. But this one, the second one, it definitely shown. And it was also because of what Darrow had to do in the second book. And I cannot say this because of spoilers, of course. But if you know the role that Darrow needs to play in the second book, that's just something that I quite enjoy in series or in books and in tales in general. So of course this one, yeah, it just did it to perfection and that's why I love this as much as I did. I do have a spoiler-free review again for the entire trilogy as well as that vlog for Red Rising and I will link them in the description box down below because I do think that my parts are full at this point. And now my number two of 2021. Now I must say that this is a surprise because when I read it, of course I loved it, I raved about it in the wrap-up of that month, but I kind of forgot about it afterwards, which is Quite interesting given the subject of this book, but then when I had to do my rankings list of my last quarter of the year, all the books that I read from October until December, I suddenly realized how much I actually loved this book. And now it's my number two of the year. And that is The Binding by Bridget Collins. This is an adult fantasy standalone, but it doesn't really read like a fantasy. It's very unique. It almost reads like literary fiction, which yes, it has a fantasy theme. That's why it's a fantasy book, but it's definitely not like all of the other fantasy books that I've read this year. In this one we follow Emmett and Emmett is to become a binder. A binder is somebody who binds people's memories in books and then those people don't even remember having these memories, they don't remember going to that binder. Now Emmett is definitely part of the reason why I absolutely love this book. I love Emmett and he's one of my favorite characters at this point, but also the writing style. And you have a sense of mystery while reading this book and you can't really put a finger on it and this adds a sense of dread. You know that something is coming but you don't really know what. It's a sense of doom almost. And then halfway through the book you have a flashback and you have this reveal and all of a sudden all of the pieces of the puzzle fit. And I think that each part of this book was so well executed that I loved it from start to finish. I know that not everybody likes this because it has quite low ratings on Goodreads and I do think that that is because it reads as a literary fiction and not really as a typical fantasy book. It also reads very slow. You have a very slow progression of the plot but I loved it especially because like I said you have that sense of dread and you have that knowledge that something is going to be exposed and you don't know what that will mean for, for our main character. So because of all of that I understand why not everybody might like it but I absolutely adored it and yes thinking about it I am going to reread this very soon because I just need to get back into this world. And then my number one is anybody surprised? I already spoiled this during my year in review video that I will link in the cards up above, but that is Fool's Fate by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Tawny Man trilogy, which is the ninth book in the realm of the Elderlings. In this one we follow Fitz and the Fool again, and this last one is definitely my favorite one of the pack, which is surprising because it has a setting, it has snow very cold, that I usually don't really like that much. I like the forest, I like more an autumn setting more but somehow I love this one and that's especially because of the characters because of the relationships that are explored further here because of some reoccurring characters that I absolutely loved and what that means to Fitz. Yes the Realm of the Eldlings just has my heart and if there's a year that I read a Realm of the Eldlings book I know it will be a number one. That's just how it goes at this point so I cannot wait to continue with this series and even though I read some other amazing books it's going to be my number one yes no questions asked and I think that if you read the realm of the elderlings and if you are around this point or maybe you have already completed it you know exactly what I mean that it's just an unfair competition at this point if you've read any of these books and if you loved that world you're going to treat them as an absolute favorite 
So those were my 10 favorite books that I've read in 2021. Just talking about them makes me excited to reread some of them again and to hopefully pick up some amazing books in 2022, some con continuations of series of books that I talked about in this video. Please let me know what some of your favorite reads of 2021 were in the comments down below and also look forward hopefully to my most disappointing reads video that comes out somewhere next week. As always, I hope that you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Bye!